So in today's lesson, we're going to take, take a look at a thing called set theory. All right. Now, we're going to explain and apply the concept of set theory given information that we use and in this lesson. So first of all, let us take a look at our lesson. It's called set and element. A set collection of elements. Here's an example of a set. You'll notice that every set that I make, I always use a set with a capital letter. So an example of a set would be a set of colors, orange, green, and red. I could also have another set that just consists of all the days of the week. An element is something in a set. So in my set A, we have the following elements. Orange, green, and red are all elements. Now let's talk about what a subset is. So when you think of subset, we, in the regular English language, when we say something is a subset of something else, it means it's a smaller group inside the bigger whole. For example, we are the human race, but within the human race are various, are various people that associate with countries. So I could say that I am Jamaican, but I am still a subset of the human race because I am a human, but I'm a smaller group within it. So when you think about it, it's a smaller group that comes from a larger set. So here's an example of a set and its subset. Suppose we have a set A, which is equal to all the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, if I have B here, B is going to be a subset by having Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Clearly, the cardinality of the number of elements in B is less than A, and it contains some of the elements in A. So the idea of the subset would be this. The subset notation is this element here. Now, that means that B is smaller than the other set. So if I said B is A, this means that B is contained in the set A. That's all it is. All right, so now let's take a look at unions. When you hear of a union, it means to combine. So a union is a set created by adding or combining two or more sets. And that's with no repetitions. So notice I said with no repetitions. So let's take a look at the union of A and B here. A is the set 1, 2, 3, and B is 3, 1, 3, 5. So basically, both of them have a 1, so we'll just put a 1 in here. Only one 
version of the one goes in there. We look for the next letter, we have a two. We'll cross that off, we've used it. And then we have three. Check it off. And then last but not least is the number five. So we check that off as well. So the union of AB is the set one, two, three. And remember, these little squiggly brackets mean this is a collection or a set. Collection or a set of elements. Now, let's talk about the thing called the intersection. When you hear the concept of an intersection, we're talking about a set that's created by the crossing or the common elements of two sets. Sometimes you might say it's an overlap. So just like I said, an intersection is a set. So an intersection is made up of elements that are in both sets. So if I was looking at the example of a, which is the set one, two, three, and B, which is the set one, three, five. I have to find the, the things that both of them have. In this case, what you're going to see is the following. We say that our set is going to be a collection of, we look from left to right and check, okay, there's a one. There's a one in A and there's a one in B, so check and check. We're going to put a 1 in here. Now, we look for the number 2. Does 2 exist in B? No, it doesn't. So we're going to cross that out. We're not going to use it. Um, we look at the number 3 in A. Is there a 3 in A? Yes. And there is a 3 in B. Check. So we're going to put a 3 in here. And the intercell. And now there's nothing left. So now let's check that last set. Is there a 5 in A and B? No, there isn't. So we're done. So the intersection of A and B is given by that. Now, intersection in mathematics between two sets is indicated by this upside down U that represents the intersection symbol. Of two sets. So we're saying here that the intersection, so for this thing here, we're saying the intersection of A and B, and the equal sign says is the set one, three. Now, when we have a new concept called a disjoint set. A disjoint set occurs when the following is true. No elements are the same. No elements are the same between the sets. Okay, now here's our example of two disjoint sets. Let's say I have the set A, which is consisting of the set one and two, and then B, which is consisting of the set three, four, and five. The two sets are considered disjoint because A and B, one, two, and three, don't have anything common between them. So now let's talk about a thing called the universal set. The universal set is the set, so that's a set that contains all elements, 
So, for example, if we were talking about numbers, just numbers in mathematics, if I said S was equal to the real numbers, the real numbers has fractions, whole numbers, negative numbers, positive numbers, decimals, um, transcendentals like 3.14159, which is pi. It has everything. It's a catch-all. So when you hear of a thing called the universal set for a type of thing, we're talking about the thing that holds everything in it. All right. And now when we talk about a thing called the complement set, the complement set basically is a set of all the opposite elements. When we talk about the notation of the complement, so let's say I had the set A. The opposite of A or the complement of A is a with a tick so it's the opposite of what's there so for example so let's scratch that out the complement of a is a a prime so if i have the days of the week from monday wednesday thursday the complement of a for the week is going to be tuesday say thursday friday uh, Saturday and Sunday. And we are done this first page. Take a moment and copy what you see. So today we'll be working on a thing called set theory. My question for you is, what do you think the null set is? When you hear of the word null, We're actually talking about nothing. That is what the word null means. So the null set is essentially what we call the empty set. This is a thing that holds nothing. Its symbol is zero with a slash through it. Sometimes when you're actually using a collection, you would just write it as, if I was wrote it, writing it as a collection, I would use it, uh, I would use two empty squiggly brackets. So that is what a null set is. A null set is the empty set. It's a collection of stuff which actually holds nothing. When we take a look at the real numbers, we can look at it as a collection of elements. So if you think, so if you about, think it, about it, the real, the numbers, real numbers are broken down into a thing called rational numbers and irrational numbers. Rational numbers are fractions or things that can be turned into fractions. Okay, now then we also have integers, which are a subset of the rationals, as you can see here. And you have whole numbers, and then you finally have natural numbers. And those are the various subsets of real numbers. So if you think about it, we have different classifications for different numbers in the real set. So here is what I want you to take a look at next. When you think of the word cardinality, right? Cardinality refers to the size of a set. So if you think about cardinality, we're talking about a set of numbers, a set of things, and we count the number of things in it.
So let's say we had a set that consisted of all the numbers that are even up to 13. And we'll call this set A. So A is equal to the set of numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Now the cardinality of A is kind of like what we would say is, in this case, the length of A. So when you're talking about the cardinality of A, you're actually going to have to put a, a bar around what we define our set to be. In this case, when you say the cardinality of A, you write it like that, and then you say it's equal to the total number of points in the set. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six points. So the cardinality is six. So remember, that is what the cardinality of a set is, the number of points that are in the set or number of objects that are in the sets. So let me give you the concept of equivalence and equal. So I'm going to give you three sets. Set B is equal to the set, the set of numbers one, two, three. The set C is equal to the word orange, blue, and red. And we'll have a third set D, which is equal to, say, three, one, two. Here's what you need to know. Equivalence means that the sets have the same cardinal number, okay? Now, for example, oh, one last thing. We should go and say that in this course, I would expect you to use N of a set name like A equaling whatever the size of the set is. So in this case, for this problem here, N of A is six. Please add that to your note and now, We'll continue with the rest of the lesson. Now, this is not quite important, but the concept of equal sets, you would look at these sets and you'd say B and D are actually equal sets because they have all of the same elements in their set. They both have one, two, and three. So you could say D and B are equivalent, but a, A is not equivalent to C, B, or D, but B and C and D's cardinality are the same. So B, C, and D are equivalent. And now let's discuss what notation is, uh, is used to indicate that two sets are equivalent. And that is the double arrow. So remember, an equivalent system means that the cardinality, the number of elements in the sets, are the same. So that means B is equivalent to C, and C is equivalent to D, and D is equivalent to be and we're done all right so now let's talk about our example based on all the information that we studied just now we studied the universal set the null set we studied intersection all that stuff so now the universal set S is defined as all the letters of the alphabet, okay? 
and V is the vowels. So V is A E I O U. And another set is called the consonants. C. So you got to understand when you have all the when you have all the vowels and you have all the consonants that makes up the entire set of the alphabet, but they never overlap. So guess what? We have a thing called the empty set, right? Or you could call it zero, i.e. the null set, okay? So there is nothing in the intersection of V and C. So remember that upside down, that upside down is the intersection of V and C. When we look at M intersecting C, let's look at that. Um, it says here that V is the vowels and the other subset is consonants and M is the letters found in Mitchell. So the intersection of Mitchell and C is this. We're looking for all of the, we're looking for all of the consonants. So in Mitchell, M is a consonant. T is a consonant. C is a consonant, uh, H is a consonant, and L is also a consonant. So the set from the set for the intersection of Mitchell and consonants is M, C. Notice there's a comma in between each of these. H. Uh, there's a T in there too and an L, and we're good. All right, so now, that's it. So now when we want to find the number, N is the cardinality, the number of elements in The vowels. So remember the vowels are A, E, I, O, U. And they say sometimes why. So I'm going to say it's why. So let's count how many we have here. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six. So the number of vowels is six. So now let us find the, the number of the intersection of what we had here. So the number of elements in here is the cardinality. So that is, you guessed it, five. Now, let's take a look at V prime. V is A-E-I-O-U, but remember, I told you the little tick that was up on here represents the opposite, also known as the complement. And the complement or the opposite of a vowel is the consonants, which is the set C that we decided that we did that we dealt with before. So now this next problem here, F, is looking at the number of elements in vowels, um, combined with the word Mitchell. All right, so let's go and calculate. Let's go and make the union of vowels and the word Mitchell. So that is equal to uh, A E I O U. And Mitchell, Mitchell's, Mitchell, 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 Mitchell. And Mitchell, Mitchell has an M. There's already an I there. There is no T. There is a C. H, yeah. E's already there. And L. 
So let's count the number of spots, the number of elements in here, because we're looking for the number of elements in the intersection of V combined with U. And when we count that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you'll notice that we have for the intersection of V union N, so that, oh, M. So if I look for that, we're getting 10. Now, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. Here's the big trick. You'll notice that tick says, that little tick in the top says the complement. So it's all the letters that, all the number of letters that aren't in the union of V and M. Remember, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So this answer is 26 minus 10, which is going to be 16. And we are done. And your homework is the attached handout that I've put on the internet for you. You don't have to do any of the, all of them, but I want you to do enough to feel comfortable. So your homework normally would have been a handout, but I put it in to the unit package, into the homework package. Go to lesson five. That is the lesson five section of the homework package that I provided for you. Okay. Lesson five's homework package in the PDF that I've provided. Good luck, guys.